friends, welcome back to our channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying the class 12 biology chapter human reproduction. Well, in this particular lesson, let's study about the female reproductive system in detail. Compared to the male reproductive system, the female reproductive system is more complex. Why? Because male reproductive system's function is to produce gamete that is the sperm production and insemination. Only these two are the function of male reproductive system. But if you see the female reproductive system, it has to produce the female gamete that is the ovum. Not only that, it has to nurture the developing fetus. It has to nurture the developing fetus. That means Inside the female reproductive tract, we have the uterus, right? So, inside the uterus only, the baby will be developing, the fertilization, everything will be carried on and till the baby gets delivered, parturation, till parturation, the full growth, development of the growing fetus will occur inside the uterus, that is inside the female reproductive tract. That's why the male reproductive tract is comparatively simpler than the female reproductive tract okay right so what are the different organs or regions in a female reproductive system the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries so what do you mean by pair of ovaries there are two ovaries one on either side okay so ovary is the singular form and ovaries are the plural so there are pair of ovaries and followed by a pair of OV ducts or fallopian ducts. So there are three names for this structure. OV ducts, fallopian tubes or uterine tube or uterine tube. So all are same. Okay. And followed by uterus, uterus. And the end of the uterus is called cervix. Okay. Mouth of the uterus, we have cervix. And followed by cervix is vagina. So, these are the organelles present inside the reproductive system. And we have some structures outside. So, they are called external reproductive structures or external genitalia, which includes labia majora, labia minora, hymen and clitoris. Okay. And there are a pair of mammary glands. So, why we are including mammary glands in the female reproductive system? Because these mammary glands, they play a very major role in supporting the ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth and child care. So throughout the child, after the child born till two years also, the mammary glands play a major role. That is in the uh, giving nutrition to the child. So that's why it has been included in the female reproductive system. Okay. So these are the different parts or regions of the female reproductive system which we are going to study in detail in this particular lesson okay right so let us first start about the structure of a female reproductive system this is the cross-sectional view of the female reproductive system so see this picture here this c-shaped structure which we could see in the cross-sectional view this c-shaped structure is the uterus okay so this is the first organ this is the uterus okay and followed by the uterus the end of the uterus that means the opening of the uterus is called cervix opening of the uterus is called cervix okay and the cervix extends out through a tube-like structure this is vagina okay and the end of the vagina, we have the vaginal orifice. So, here we have the vaginal orifice. Okay. This is the fourth structure. These are the basic structure of a female reproductive system. So, this is the picture given in the NCRT book where some parts are missing. So, let's show you this in this uh, diagram. Look at the diagram on your right top. So, this structure is the ovary. So, where the ovary is located in this side view, see this is the uterus. On the top of the uterus, this structure is the ovary, right? Ovary has a tube-like structure. This is called fallopian tube or uterine tube, 
okay so these structures are missing here so if you want to draw it would be like this this is the ovary and the ovary is attached with a tube like structure or something like this right with fimbri okay you can include in this so this is the cross-sectional view of female reproductive system okay so where female reproductive system that means where the uterus is exactly located so this uterus is located in between the rectum and the urinary bladder so look at this picture this is rectum the end part of the large intestine this pipe like structure is called rectum okay this is a rectum which comes out as anus okay so a rectum and this one is the urinary bladder this one is the urinary bladder and the outlet of this is the urethra okay so urinary bladder and urethra so where uterus is located it is located in between urinary bladder and urethra clear okay so let us see where this female reproductive system is exactly located in the female body so we have seen the male reproductive system where it is located it is located in the pelvic region see here also the female reproductive system is located in the pelvic region and what is this bone this bone is called pelvic bone this bone is called pelvic bone so in the pelvic bone you see here this is your navel right navel so above this is the pelvic bone starting above this region is called abdomen abdomen region and below this region is called pelvis pelvic region so female reproductive system is located in the pelvic region like this okay so like this structure the female reproductive system is located in the pelvic region okay so this is the front view and this is the uh, cross view of the female reproductive structure located in the pelvic region so if you say here the pelvic region where so all these areas down are pelvic region above this is the abdominal region okay right so let us see the first organ and the most important organ of the female reproductive system that is ovaries so ovaries we have two ovary on either side that's why we call this as ovaries so ovaries are the primary female sex organs so what is the function of the ovary the ovaries function is to produce the gamete that is ovum right yes so every month one ovum is produced on alternatively in each side of the ovary so look at this picture in this picture this pink color structure which i am drawing in blue this is the ovary on either side okay so what is the size of this ovary this is almost 2 to 4 centimeter 2 to 4 centimeter in length okay that is the size of the ovary and what are the functions of the ovary apart from producing ovum it plays a major role in the production of hormones so ovaries produce four different kinds of hormones such as estrogen estrogen progesterone progesterone okay androgen and inhibin inhibin so these are the yeah okay yeah so these are the four different hormones produced by ovary that's why ovary is also called as endocrine gland because they are secreting hormone right so they are called endocrine gland they produce steroid hormone or ovarian hormone these are called steroid hormone or ovarian hormone and they play a major role in menstruation and fertility they play a major role in the menstrual cycle and also in the fertility okay and how it is located these ovaries are connected to the pelvic wall and also by the side of the uterus by ligaments okay so look at this picture this ovary it looks like just it's standing alone no it's not so it is connected to the side of the uterus and also in the pelvic wall with the help of ligaments okay 
so let's see what are the ligaments which helps in the attachment of the ovaries and also this uterus okay the first one is called ovarian ligament or utero ovarian ligament which connects the uterus and the ovary okay look at the structure this is the uterus right so you could see this beautiful pure shape uterus this is the uterus okay and here located on either side of the uterus in this picture it looks like some gray color right so this structure is the what this structure is the ovary okay so you see here in between the uterus and the ovaries there is a thick ligament ligament there is a connection okay this is a ligament this ligament is called ovarian ligament also we call this as utero utero ovarian ligament utero ovarian ligament so why it is called utero ovarian ligament because it connects uterus and the ovary uterus and the ovary so it's called utero ovarian ligament understood right and so here the ovary is connected to the side side of the uterus like this with the help of utero ovarian ligament not only this this ovary is also connected at the back with the pelvis that is in the pelvic wall with the help of meso ovarium this is another ligament which helps to connect the ovary with the pelvic wall at the back okay so here it here is the meso ovarian ligament understand okay on the other end of the ovaries there is another ligament called suspendary ligament this is present on either side all these ligaments are present in either side okay another one and here there is a fourth type of ligament called broad ligament can you see this structure which is very broad in um, shape it starts from here from the starting point until this cervical region okay so this broad v shaped structure is called broad ligament so it is a wide fold of peritoneum that connects the sides of the uterus to the walls and the floor of the pelvis so what is the function of this broad ligament this broad ligament connects the uterus sides and also with the pelvic wall okay so like this with the help of this ligaments the uterus ovaries everything are connected with each other and also with the pelvic wall understand okay so let us see the zoom picture this is the uterus and which is connected with the ovary if you take a cross section of the ovary it will be like this so this picture is the cross section of the ovary okay this is a 3d picture and what you could see here this is uterus and uterus is connected to the ovary with what is this what is this ligament utero ovarian ligament utero ovarian ligament right okay this is utero ovarian ligament and here this structure is this tube like structure is called fallopian tube we are going to study all these details in detail okay so let's see the first one the cross section of ovary if you cut this ovary so it will appear like this let's see what are the organelles or internal structures which which is present inside the ovary okay here each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium called germinal epithelium see outside outside we have a structure called germinal epithelium or cuboidal epithelium okay this is the outside thin layer which covers the ovary clear okay second one everything which is present inside everything which is present inside the ovary is called stroma everything which is present inside the ovary is called stroma okay so outside is called germinal epithelium or cuboidal epithelium everything which is present inside the ovary is called stroma we can divide the stroma into two region one is called the peripheral cortex another one is called inner medulla so what is peripheral cortex can you see this yellow color region yes this yellow color region this consists of cellular connective tissues so what is present in this it has dense granular 
ovarian follicles. So ovarian follicles are present throughout this cortex region. Okay. So what are ovarian follicles? The cells which produces ovum. Uh, this we will study in detail in oogenesis. Okay. It will start with the primordial uh, follicles and then uh, primary follicle, secondary follicle like the different stages of growing ovum. So they are called ovarian follicles. So those cells are present in this yellow color region. So this region is called cortex. Clear? This is cortex. Second one. And this brown color region is called medulla. The inner layer, the inner region is called medulla. Medulla is a loose connective tissue. But if you see this cortex, cortex is a dense connective tissue. But medulla is a loose connective tissue, this brown color. This is a cross section. Okay. So what is present in the medulla? In the medulla, there are nerves. Okay. And arteries, veins, lymphatic uh, blood vessels are there. Okay. So lymphatic vessels, arteries, veins and nerve fibers are present in the region medulla. So this is the basic structure of a ovary cross section. Let us see some more details in this particular picture. Okay, so this is a very elaborated picture. So here, see here, here first <coughs> you could see arteries and veins entering in this part. So arteries and veins are present in which region? They are present in the center part. Arteries and veins are present in the center part of the ovary. So it is called medulla. Medulla is the central part of the ovary. Right. Outside the medulla what is present? These are the different types of cells. I told you know primordial follicle, primary follicle, secondary follicle, tertiary follicle. Forget about this now. We are just studying the anatomy of the female reproductive structure. Don't worry about in detail about the internal structure of ovum which we are going to study in oogenesis. Okay. You just remember these are the different types of layers of growing cells which uh, develop into ovum and these cells are present surrounding this area and this structure is what? This structure is cortex. Cortex. Clear? Okay. And surrounding this, surrounding this there is a very thin epithelial layer you could see here thin epithelial layer this is called germinal epithelium germinal epithelium and inside the germinal epithelium there is an another dense layer this is called tunica albugiana same like it's like capsule capsule covering this is number four tunica albugiana so this is the root where the blood vessels nerves lymphatics enters the ovary Okay, right. So, very simple, basic and easy structure. And look at this picture at your right. This is a histological, um, actual cross-section histological picture which is stained and seen under the microscope. Okay. So, if we label the parts. So, here, this area where the blood vessels enter here. Blood vessels, that means arteries, nerves, lymphatics, everything enter this in this region okay so this region is called what this region is called medulla okay medulla right and surrounding this medulla you could see different growing cells these are all the ovarian follicles okay so what is this region this region is called cortex this region is called cortex okay and this outside region, what is this outside region? This is called germinal epithelium. Germinal epithelium. And here, below this germinal epithelium, there is a thick layer. Okay, like this. So, this is the capsule layer. This is called tunica albugiana. Understand? So, these are the four important structures of an ovary. Clear? Right. So, let us see the next uh, part of the female reproductive system that is called oviduct or I told you, you know there are three names for this oviduct fallopian tubes or uterine tubes so this region this region is what we are going to study now so this region is called fallopian tube 
okay this region is called fallopian tube so what is the size of this tube this is about 10 to 12 centimeter length 10 to 12 centimeter in length okay so this has many parts let's see what are the parts okay so see here we know this is ovary the region which is closest to the ovary this region is called infundibulum this region is called infundibulum it's written here see this is called infundibulum the region which is closest to the ovary is called infundibulum on the edges of the infundibulum there are finger like projections like this for example if this is the ovary the, the, there is a finger like projection so the infundibulum finger like projections they are called fibr fimbri they sits above the ovary like this finger like projection okay here the structure in the structure they are called fimbri fimbri okay finger like projections and third one there is an apart uh, next to that there is a wider part later the infundibulum there is a wider part called ampulla ampulla okay and after the ampulla the last part is a narrow part which is lumen in nature it is called isthmus this this narrow part is called isthmus okay so all these four regions they are together called as fallopian tube so let us see somewhat in zoomed position in this uh, picture okay so see here this is the ovary ovary okay so very close to the ovary present what infundibulum actually this is the picture from ncrt book where they, they left some small space here it should not be like this look at this picture this is the very actually correct picture that means the fimbriae of the infundibulum should sit exactly on the top of the ovary okay so it should be like this like this so no problem you can just extend this fimbriae like this you can draw like this on either side okay draw like this okay so fimbriae is the finger like projection infundibulum is the funnel shaped region and ampulla and the isthmus is the narrow lumen part these are together called fallopian tube uterine tube or oviduct okay so what is the use of this fallopian tube or this part see the ovary produces ovum when the ovum is coming out what this ampulla uh, fimbriae does it takes or captures the ovum and sends it through the fallopian tube so that is the function of this structure okay so look at this picture here this is the ovary okay here the ovary is producing an egg ovum so when the ovum is coming out in this part the fimbriae which is present here what it does it takes up this ovum and send it to this through this tube fallopian tube okay meanwhile if copulation occurs if sexual intercourse occurs if the sperm enters through this root sperm enters through this root where the sperm meets the ovum here and fertilization occurs in this region fertilization occurs in this region so where fertilization occurs fertilization does not occur in the uterus fertilization occurs inside the fallopian tube okay and what happens after fertilization zygote formation will be there and blastula it form okay blastula you know what is a blastula blastula is a mass of cell so the zygote divides by mitotic cell division and it produces some 150 to 200 number of a ball of cell that is called blastula so this blastula they come and get implanted on the endometrium okay so from here the baby starts to develop the fetus develop so what you should remember the fallopian tube is the region where the fertilization occurs but the implantation should not occur in the fallopian tube if it occurs here that results in ectopic pregnancy that results in ectopic pregnancy okay this is a, a rare condition and the baby will not be uh, good because see here the baby has to enlarge okay there is no space in the fallopian tube for the baby to grow okay 
so it won't result in a healthy baby okay if it, it is an ectopic pregnancy right okay so i will show you a clip just to see this the ovary produces the ovum it gets released where the sperm is coming and fertilizing the ovum after fertilization this blastocyst is formed this goes and get fixed in the endometrium okay understand so like this every month it happens one side one month uh, one side ovary produces an ovum and another side another month ovary produces an ovum so during the production if sperm is there it meets the ovum if no sperm is there then fertilization will not occur right okay so the next part of the female reproductive system is the uterus uterus is called womb okay so in the female reproductive system so far we have seen two ovaries two fallopian tubes on either side but now uterus womb is only one okay so uterus is single hollow muscular what is hollow hollow means nothing inside it is just a gap because where the baby is going to grow okay so fetus is growing so that is a hollow region muscular thick walled highly vascular more blood supply is there in this region okay so look here the uterus is muscular that means it is one of the female womb is one of the strongest muscles in a female uh, body okay so it's one of the strongest muscles and you know where it is located this is the uterus in this picture see the uterus this c-shaped structure on the cross-sectional view is the uterus where it is located it is located in between the rectum and the urinary bladder okay in between the rectum and the urinary bladder is the uterus and the structure is its shape is it is like inverted pure fruit you know pure fruit right inverted pure fruit like appearance so this is the pure fruit if it is inverted it will look like this and so this uterus is exactly looks like inverted your fruit like appearance clear okay so let us see what are the different parts of an uterus so we are talking now about uterus this region is the uterus right till the cervix is the uterus okay so the uterus has a center region this is called body body of the uterus body of the uterus okay and on the top there is a superior region this region is called fundus this region is this is body okay first one this is called fundus you try fundus right and then here at the base of the uterus there is a opening this opening is called cervix uterus opens into vagina this is vagina this is vagina okay so uterus opens into vagina through the cervix so cervix cervix and in this is vagina number four in between the cervix and vagina there is a small canal that is called cervical canal cervical canal okay these are the regions of uh, uterus so here this cervical canal it has two orifices orifices means a small opening one orifice is here which is the orifice coming out towards the vagina so this is called external external orifice okay and same cervical canal it has an another orifice here which goes towards the cervix so this region is called internal internal orifice okay very easy so this is the basic structure of uterus uterus has a center part which is called body and has a superior part that is called fundus uterus leads to vagina through cervix the opening of the uterus is called cervix and in between the cervix and the vagina there is a small canal called cervical canal it, it has two corners two orifices internal orifice and external orifice so this is the structure of the uterus okay so along with this vagina and this area this area is completely together called as birth canal birth canal so where the baby comes out okay so this is called birth canal 
right so let us see some more details about this uterus so this wall of this uterus is having three layers of tissues okay the first one is called perimetrium this external thin membranous tissue is called perimetrium the second one is called myometrium what is myometrium this peach color this full thick middle smooth muscle this is a smooth muscle okay so this layer is called myometrium so what is the function of the myometrium during parturition or during delivery this myometrium gives contraction so because of this contraction only the baby gets out okay the fetus expelled out so this region is called myometrium this is a smooth muscle okay and third region this orange color you could see here this irregular region this is the endometrium this region orange color is the endometrium so what is endometrium the inner glandular layer the inner glandular layer of the uterine cavity is called endometrium okay so why it is like irregular because during every month menstrual cycle this endometrium undergoes changes so what happens during um, menstruation the blood releases out no so along with this blood you could see small this um, uh, muscle this fibers will comes out okay so they are all the regions which peels off from here this area is called endometrium okay so there are three muscle or three layers of tissue in the uterus perimetrium outside myometria middle layer and endometrium in layer inside layer okay right so let's see the fourth important part of the female reproductive system that is vagina so what is vagina vagina is a large fibromuscular tube it's a tube like structure that extends from where it is extending from see this is cervix what is cervix the end region of the uterus is called cervix that is the the opening of the uterus is called cervix okay so from the cervix till the external region this tube this tube is called vagina clear so what is the use of the vagina vagina is a very important organ during sexual intercourse it is needed for copulation okay so this is the vagina so when you see the cross view of this female structure this area see this is the look at the picture on your right so this is the this tube like structure is called vagina okay here finishes a cervix this area is cervix okay so from the cervix this tube till the outside region is called vagina clear okay let's see the fifth region of the female reproductive system that is the external genitalia so what is external genitalia all the regions or all the structures which are present externally that means outside the vaginal region they are called external genitalia so that the structures that lie external to the vagina okay so they are called external genitalia or vulva there is another name for this also called as vulva okay so there are four important structures in this external genitalia they are labia majora labia minora clitoris and hymen so what is labia majora and minora these are fleshy fold of tissues so what is the function of these tissues means they help to protect the internal soft delicate uh, this female reproductive organs and also the urethral openings like this okay so the they are all protective organs and clitoris clitoris is a tiny finger like projection which helps in uh, it's like a pleasure organ during the sexual intercourse okay and third one is the hymen hymen is a very thin delicate covering the outer opening of the vagina okay so in this cross section picture so if you see here see you know this this opening is the urethral opening okay this is the urethral opening which comes from the urinary bladder right okay here this opening is the vaginal opening this opening is the vaginal opening okay so here outside here this fleshy fold of tissue is called labia majora this is like this 
this is like this okay labia majora and second one is the labia minora inside inside to this is the labia minora okay and third one is the clitoris look look here there is some finger like projection like this some structure is there okay so this projection is called clitoris this projection is called clitoris i'll show you in the front view which we could easily recognize these external genitalia parts okay so the first important thing let us go one by one the first part is the mons pubis what is mons pubis the mons pubis is a fatty tissue layer which is present on the superior region where the hairs are present this is called mons pubis fatty tissue layer okay and next to that is the labia majora see this one the structure which i am drawing in green the structure is the labia majora okay so what is labia majora this is a fleshy tissue which helps in the production of the internal regions okay and next to the labia majora is this area you could see here and another <coughs> another uh, tissue layer this is called labia minora this which i am highlighting okay on either side they are present this is called labia minora so these two structures are the protective covering or the protective regions of the internal organelles okay the next region is the clitoris i told you, you know the finger like projection so those front part will be like this this is clitoris clitoris okay and here this opening small opening is called urethral opening urethra which ends here right from where the urine passes out so this is the urethral opening and all this region is together called as vestibule okay the central part is called vagina and here you have a opening there is a cover there is a partial covering of this vagina that is called hymen okay so what is the function of the hymen uh, previously people thought that hymen is a representation of female virginity but it is not so because this hymen is a very soft thin delicate tissue which could get easily ruptured by uh, uh, girls who is engaging in sports activities or horse riding uh, biking bicycling uh, like this okay so this get ruptured so there is now it is proved that there is no connectivity between hymen rupture and the virginity okay so this is the hymen is a thin membranous uh, layer partially which covers the vagina okay and here this is the anus so you could see here in the female this area is the urethral opening and this area is the anus both they are easily or near the vagina so there is a more chance of infection if these areas are not cleaned or uh, personal hygiene is not maintained okay so a girl can easily get infection in her private parts from the urinary tract infection like it could pass through the vagina or from the anus the bacteria present in the anus could enter the vagina like this so that's why personal hygiene is very important for a female okay and then there are two important glands which is present in the female uh, sex organ that is called bartholinis gland also called as vestibular gland and skinis gland these are the two important glands so what is bartholinis gland bartholinis gland is located posterior to the left and right opening of the vagina so this is the vagina okay so where you could see here this one this there is two actually the gland is like this located behind okay but the opening is here in the front so this is called bartholini gland so what is the function of this gland they secrete a substance which helps in the lubrication of the vagina during the sexual intercourse this is similar to um, in a male we have bulbo urethral gland they secrete some substance which helps in the is a lubrication during the sexual intercourse so similarly a lubrication substance is produced by this bartholini gland also there is an another gland which is called skinny gland which opens here located on the anterior wall of the vagina okay 
this is urethra urinary opening here this gland is called skinny gland okay they also secrete a lubricating fluid this skinny gland is similar to prostate gland of the male reproductive system okay so like this two glands are located around this region bartholini's gland and skinny's gland their main function is to produce a substance which lubricates the vagina during the sexual intercourse so if you see this glands in the cross sectional view look at the picture at your right so where here this is the vagina here okay so here on the both corner of the vagina we have this bartholini's gland bartholini gland okay and where is the skinny gland present this is the uh, here here skinny gland is present skinny okay clear right so i hope you understand this lecture in this lecture we have studied the female reproductive system in detail so what is uh, ovaries and fallopian duct and how the uterus will be what are the different uh, structures present in the uterus okay layers of the uterus and external genitalia like this so, uh, different parts of the female reproductive system we have studied so our next lecture will be about the mammary glands so if you like this lecture please like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe to our channel neat biology expert see you in another lecture till there thank you take care